Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back for another brand new video and have a look around, ladies and gentlemen. Does it not just put a smile on your tired faces right now as we are uploading once again post midnight, which means one thing and one thing only. The football has finally, finally returned and by God, is it emotional. Even though we're kind of catching our L the night, just the fact that the real football is back and we get to enjoy, be frustrated, be sad, be mad, be glad at every single kick. Uh, the football is a glorious, glorious time. So go ahead and give yourselves a round of applause. We go through the four or five weeks slow burn of a summer. Now the real summer kicks in as the football Football is back as we're here to discuss a weird two-in-one style scenario that has a testimonial mix with a pre-season game. But that two-in-one is very ironic, ladies and gentlemen, because the score we're here to talk about from the game between Rangers and Newcastle finished 2-1. And look, obviously as a pre-season game, I'm sure there's not going to be too many people actually interested in tuning in to the very first pre-season game, but for me there is a couple of things that we need to talk about and need to actually discuss. Before we get lost in the actual game recap though, however, if you didn't mind hitting the like button, let's start the old 2023 campaign off mentally. That would be absolutely sensational if you want to hit that like button or subscribe to the channel or if you want to wait to see whether or not this channel is worth hitting a like for or subscribing. That is completely fair enough. Let's go ahead and try to earn that like. Starting off where this video needs to so start off and that is with one of these and a thank you to Alan McGregor as it may be his third, yes, third farewell in the last year in my personal opinion. Just like everything ladies and gentlemen, it's free and out and McGregor has finally bowed out and retired from Rangers Football Club. Now, I'm not sure whether or not he's going to be retiring his gloves up permanently and retiring as a football player, or he may move on, but he's done now playing for Rangers, and it was quite emotional getting to see the big man start to break. You know, he tries to be guarded, you know, he tries to keep it in, but aye, he got his goodbye, a packed Ibrox, and let the love be known for one of the greatest to ever pull on a pair of gloves. And look, I know everyone's got their favourites, and I know everyone's got, well, it's Gorham, and rightly so, so if that's how you feel, but in my personal opinion, McGregor belongs at that table and a part of that conversation and whether you think he's better or not, I think we all agree that fact that he belongs right there and that's a testament to the man and what he's done in a Rangers shot far, far too many major McGregor moments they actually discuss and break down. Even saying the word starts to make me smile. But aye, this was the last time we'll get to see him line up and pull the gloves on. This one of the greatest that's ever pulled on a Rangers journey. We thank you. But it wasn't just a testimonial this. It was a pre-season game, which is why it's so weird. I've never seen this type of game before because it wasn't filled with all legends or people. No, it was an actual game of football against a fellow Champions League side in Newcastle. A very good Newcastle side and I love for both sides, even though it is the first pre-season game and they can normally be tortured because you're watching people who's usually miles after and is never getting to play. But because of the quality of the opposition and them respecting the fixture, Newcastle picked a very good side and so did we. And it was actually enjoyable getting to see some big names out there on the eyebrow surface. But I'm going to be honest with you and to address the elephant in the room, of course we lost in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Am I going to be spitting my dummy out, frustrated and annoyed? Obviously no, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not even going to contemplate that type of mindset because surely no one is actually feeling that way because it is just pre-season and it's just the start. All I need today, if you are frustrated and annoyed that you didn't lose, eh, you didn't win this game, I should say it's take us back to last year when we bet Real Madrid 2-1. Mind me, folk, we had a God squad where we never... Did we? So I'm not going to get too lost in the actual result, but what I will talk about is a couple key points for the game, in my personal opinion. The first one, by the way, is Raskin. Like, I know it's pre-season and I'm not going to lose my mind, but am I wrong in saying to you watching today's video, the best player, the best performance we saw out of everyone on that park was our wee Belgian magician in the middle of the park because to me, he changed the game when he came on and everything we done positively to get back into the game and try to push on for the winner or started with the wee Belgian. So I Nico, slap away to start the season. Half lad, keep it up there, Pitbull. And I 
Shout out to Raskin. Now again, I'm not sitting here saying he's better than the likes of the Tonali, who obviously is the most expensive Italian player of all time, and he's an incredible footballer. But all I'm saying is, some people take a couple games to warm up, some people start off there. Raskin clearly starts at that bite and plays at that intensity, and he's shone out like a light in that game, in my personal opinion. And I, I just left that game thinking, how good can Raskin actually become in a Ranger shot? It'll be interesting to see who stood out to you overall in the actual game. But speaking of the game, it was obviously feeling a bit iffy now and again. Not everybody was up to the standard of the Raskin, the, the intensity of a Raskin. There were some meaty challenges here, especially on Cantwell. It was good to see it's not only Scottish opposition who's completely obsessed by the laddie. They were kicking lumps at him there. But it was fun to see our new players actually integrate and start to connect and start to build relationships in the game and that's something I take being a Rangers fan finally seeing fresh ideas fresh enthusiasm I'm not sitting watching every single minute of a Rangers game knowing exactly how he plays what he's going to do he can't turn oh it's that part of the season when he's no fit for six months I've not got any of that I just sat and watched professional football players try to build connections and try to impress us and by God was it glorious big Seema who did yes drift in and out of games but he saw his strength he saw what we talked about and that he, he battled off a couple big Newcastle defenders a couple of times linked up the play that way got stuck in a couple again it wasn't a, a fantastic performance for the big man and he obviously will hopefully have better performances as a Rangers shot but you got to see his pace and that and behind because sometimes we actually just chucked a ball in behind and we had someone run for it I was about passing out ladies and gentlemen because I'm normally seeing Alfredo carry a caravan to long through balls but we actually had someone with genuine pace and I liked that attacking threat speaking of a light though, can we talk about big Sam Technical Lammers new people? That boy right there showed his quality and technical ability in abundance. Everything we talked about in the preview video with his skill and ability on either foot to turn it and twist it and get a shot off was all there to be seen. And he was another one that I sat back and went, by goodness, yes, he's a big risk. Yes, a lot of people are worried about him. But that there for his performance, not only his goal showed he has Go football, just his technique on the ball. You can just see quality, in my personal opinion, in every single touch of the football. Stoughton it did. Bringing others in, I went, by God, he's got real quality. And I don't know about you people, but I just left that game thinking with the exact same thing in the old membrane. I've just witnessed a number 14 score for Rangers. I might need to lie down. <laughs> Sorry, Ken. But I, of course, it wasn't all positives and all happy-go-lucky or anything like that. We did obviously lose the game and the goal we conceded, I'm not going to get frustrated, I'm not going to get angry, but can I moan for the first time in 2023 season about Barisic defensively? Because, by God, we're here again. <laughs> Can't it again, Rangers? Can somebody get Ross Wilson on the phone? Because I need to talk to him. Please, put in a bid. I need it. Because pre-season and all this is genuine schoolboy stuff here. It's a nice through ball, I guess, but his position and he gets sucked too close to the centre-back. is Dane Davis, a suitor's job, I should say, sorry. And he just leaves his man Almiron wide open, who, yes, it's a glorious finish. Beautiful curl beyond McGregor. Nothing McGregor can actually do. But I'm sitting back and looking at Barisic already, people, and being frustrated that he's still... Can he turn... Just turn around, man. Turn around, man. And look... What's behind you? Pre-season! I promised myself I wouldn't be getting frustrated, but that's the opening goal of the game. Now, we did threaten a couple times through our man, Kieran Dill, career mode, Kieran Dill. It was weird seeing him no play at the messy level, but you got to see his industry side of the game, and that's something, again, we stressed a lot in his preview video. He's maybe no jumping here, there, or everywhere, but he gives absolutely everything, and he runs himself into the ground, and that's why I can see him becoming a fan favourite in the Rangers team, and you can see why right away, just box to box, throwing himself into things, and he was unlucky lucky with a wee shot as he tried to combine very well with Lammers, it bounces back to him, he drags a shot wide, they also put Cantwell through on goal as well with a wonderful weighted through ball that finds our boy Cantwell, but it's a clever defender to knock him a little bit off balance, Cantwell falls over as he's hitting it and it ends up going wide, and that was it for McGregor's appearances, after that incident, after that chance from Cantwell, McGregor 
was clapped off the park for the very last time as a Rangers player and on comes our true number one in Jackie Butlin it was great to see the big man just seeing the height of the laddie him and McGregor had a big talk big conversation a big talk on the sideline I should say and that was a true passing of the glove if you will. We didn't get to see too much of the big lad. He obviously conceded a goal in the second half, but it was an absolute world uh, winder right here. The top him, there's nothing he could have done in that aspect. But aye, it was it for the first half. It was kind of petering out for the last five minutes. Then we come out at half time, and again, second half starts the same-ish. I'd say, despite us making two substitutions as Leon Balligan, the big man, came home, and Fashion Sakala came on. Do you know who Newcastle brought on? They made six substitutions. Three of them, Isaac, all right, Isaac, whatever you want to call him, all I know is he scores goals and he costs billions. Millions, but it's close enough. It's literally a letter. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen. He also brought on Bruno and Anthony Gordon. That's about 150 million worth of talent. We brought on Balligan. Fashion Sakala. I'm not wanting to hear anyone say the second half was Rangers' game because they made subs at half time. If that's been doing on their luck and bringing on poor players spending 150 million, by God, I wish it was them because that there is an abundance of riches and they brought on genuine quality. But again, for me, the one who stood out above, even the likes of Bruno, who I rate very highly as well. By the way, I'm going to try and get both Tenali and Bruno in my fantasy uh, draft team. We'll talk about that maybe another time. But it was wee Raskin on the 60th minute that changed the game like this. And again, just his bite, his energy, his drive. Started winning 50-50 balls. Starting to ping some passes in behind. Switch the possession from here to there. And it was no wonder we scored just a couple minutes after his introduction. And the way we end up scoring is great to see as it's all on Big Lammers. It's completely on the big man's work rate, energy and anticipation getting in front of the centre half, pushing him out the way, showing real strength and then what I love to see is I'm going through on goal and his first instinct is not to pass or look or maybe take an extra touch. One touch to set himself, finishes it to the back of net and that goal right there as it trickled over the back of the line will probably do wonders for that laddie and hopefully wonders for this football club as the big Dutch forward is off the charts in his very first game and I can't wait to see more of Big Lammers. If you are still watching, by the way, what was your opinion on Lammers? Did you see enough? Did you see a bright enough spot? For me, I certainly did because my only frustration I've honestly got, ladies and gentlemen, in part for Barisic, obviously, in the first half, but sorry, right, we brought Redvan on so there was some defending actually done, is in the second half, when we did have that spell of seven, eight minutes after us taking the, the lead and after Raskin coming on, we made the substitution started bringing on the likes of the Scott Wrights and everything like that, started bringing on young laddies like Young Rice. And I wouldn't say it killed the game because I'd still say over the next 10, 15 minutes we boss possession, but we just lost a wee bit more quality and a bit more quality, especially in the, the, the other end of the park, the attacking areas, because right... You had Rabi, you had Sakala, they're just whipping in balls, it's not really getting anywhere. Rabi hit one decent, to be fair, that was unlucky to connect, but we had chances, we had opportunities to spin in behind, but we just never took them. We had a returning fan favourite as well, it was not only Barisic getting beat by someone behind them, we also had Sakala offside, so... Even the introduction of the little magician, Alex Lowry, couldn't unlock the Newcastle door, despite a wonderful ball in behind to Fashion Sakala, but this was the game, right? He would play it in behind, brilliant ball by Lowry. Sakala's running in, he cuts inside, he then starts to fall out of his feet, falls into the defenders, he's got so many men in pass, he can shoot, but he ends up just falling in to himself. They hit a counter-attack, long ball in behind, the ball goes down to the channel. To be fair, it's a wonderful bit of skill, a wonderful bit of dribbling as he chips the ball in, and Big Ashby, I believe it is, ends up then a looping heater. Maybe a one in a million, but it goes right to the back post. But Butlin's got no chance. I mean, if you merge both Butlin and McGregor together, I still don't think they're saving that out, by the way. And I we end up getting punished, and maybe that's a wee tale in itself, ladies and gentlemen, that if you didn't have any product, you can have all the pace if you want, but if you didn't have that quality, when you play quality, you will be stung. Because for me, we bossed that second half. We looked 
the better side. But we didn't get anything for it, and that's what football's all about, especially up that level up here, especially when you're playing against the likes of a fellow Champions League side and everything like that. And Newcastle get the win that maybe the first half deserved, and obviously their two clinical finishes certainly deserved. But aye, it's a sad one for us, I guess, because we did do enough to win that game, we just never had enough quality in the right areas, and it was usually the same suspects letting the balls fall away. I want to give one wee last shout out, by the way, to Alex Lowry, who nearly brought us back 2-2 two -two with the last touch and I loved it, he turned this man opened the space up, instead of maybe trying to find the pass, he just had a pop and it ended up being a phenomenal save by Darlow I believe it was in the sticks at that point, ridiculous save because it was a brilliant shot, I was convinced it was in but I it trickles just wide after the goalie gets his fit in it and he's the player for me right because the Raskins the Cantwells the Lammers the Desters when he comes in in a couple of days the Seamers and that they're all going to be vital parts and they're going to be getting minutes they're going to be getting opportunities Alex Lowry is a fantastic talent because I'll be honest I don't know what's going on behind the scenes or anything like that you hear this this and everything ladies and gentlemen all I know is when he steps across that white line every single time I've seen him play at the highest level for Rangers, he's looked like he belongs. So I want to see more. And for me, he needs to be the story of preseason. Not just this game or the next game or the next game. Every single minute he gets on the park, he needs to really grab the opportunity because we're all excited about this sign and this sign and this sign. In. But there is something right there in that young laddie. So he's the one for me to watch in this preseason because I want to see how he steps up and answers the call. He nearly done it in the biggest way for me he deserves more game time now going in to the weekend or midweek uh, no it is the weekend sorry then it's midweek he deserves more game time and I'll be very interested to see so he is my one to watch but my performer of the day clearly is Raskin that's it that's all I've got to say ladies and gentlemen what about you let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below who has stood out to you and who is the one player that needs to take this preseason by the scruff of the neck and show what they've got. Be very interested to see what the comment sections are if you'd like to get involved. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, we have some massive things coming up, especially on Friday. I can't wait for you to see it. But until then, I've been CJ Norman 2 Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.